We are The Point, a church that loves God, loves people, and loves life. If you are interested in learning more about us, please go to our website, thepointva.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to everyone joining us online this morning. And I want to say good morning again to our Louisa Campus Dream Team, who is meeting this morning for the third Sunday in a row for training and is a watch party at the Louisa Arts Center. Everyone in our church family is so excited and cheering on our campus in Louisa as we become one house with two rooms and as we prepare for our public launch on Sunday, July 12th. So excited for that day. Also, just as a reminder to everybody, Sunday, July 12th is the first Sunday for our in-person gatherings in Charlottesville as well. And of course, when we return to our in-person gatherings, we'll be gathering in our new facility on Pantops starting that Sunday. Can I get a good Amen from everybody. I know we're all excited for that day. So many incredible things happening. Hey, I just wanna take a minute and I wanna say happy Father's Day as well. Just to all of our fathers, to all of our grandfathers, all spiritual fathers, we just wanna honor you. We celebrate you today. We're so grateful for you. Um, Last thing before we dive into the word is, is that we have a culture at the point where we pray first. And before anything and everything, we pray first. We just believe that everything is better and anything is possible if you pray first. So before I start the day, before I send the email, before I make the phone call, before I have a conversation, we pray first. Say that with me. We pray first. So as we prepare to enter into this season, starting this morning, we're kicking off 21 days of prayer that will lead up to Sunday, July the 12th. So the 21 days Days of prayer. They're going to be online every morning from 7.30 to 7.45 a.m. on Facebook, our app, or our website. And on Sundays, our time of prayer will take place in our services. All right, let's pray and let's dive into the Word of God together. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity you've given us to worship you. And Lord, I pray right now as your word goes forth that you would accomplish your purposes in our hearts. Lord, have your way with us. Lord, I pray you would give us ears to hear, give us courage to obey. Lord, we don't wanna just be hearers of the word. We wanna be doers of the word. God, we wanna be changed. We wanna be transformed. And so, Lord, I pray that we would have an encounter and an experience with your presence this morning. We know that in your presence, we cannot stay the same, that we are forever and eternally changed. So, Lord, may we experience you, experience your power as your word goes forth. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take the word into the deep places of the heart to heal our hearts. God, we continue to pray for healing in our land. And we ask, Father, this morning that you would just have your way with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said a big amen. Well, this morning, uh, we are continuing our new, our series, New Normal. It's not a new series, but the name of it is New Normal. And uh, we're planning to wrap up this series on Sunday, July 5th. And then we're gonna kick off a brand new teaching series on July the 12th, okay, that big Sunday. And as we've been saying through this series, the idea of, of, of normal by itself, right? It means familiar and we like familiar. We like familiar because we like predictable. But the minute that you add the word new to normal, that means change. And change is hard, isn't it? Change means loss and loss is emotional. Therefore, change is emotional. But just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not necessary. Now, throughout this season of COVID-19 and the stay-at-home orders, like there were things that were exposed in us that we realized it needed to change. Um, Maybe a lot of us experienced feeling out of control. You realized how much you struggle with control issues. That needed to change. 
We're, we're right now seeing racial injustices exposed in our country. They need to change. Uh, maybe God is revealing biases or prejudices in our hearts and our minds based on the color of someone's skin. That needs to change. God wants us to experience a new normal, his new normal. And we call that the kingdom of God, amen? So I want you to open your Bibles with me this morning to 2 Peter chapter one. And as we turn there, I always wanna encourage note-taking. If you're not a note-taker, you should become one. And this is a great morning to start because we're gonna be covering a lot of ground. So you can pull out your phone and take notes. I personally, I carry a journal everywhere uh, with me and I'm always taking notes. I always take notes. And I have over 20 years of journals from taking notes. And there are times, when the Holy Spirit will remind me of something I heard years ago in a message. And it's crazy. Like I can go back to my journals and I can find that very thing that the Holy Spirit said to me then. So as we look to 2 Peter 1, remember Peter has given us this invitation to participate in God's divine power. That's the reality of the kingdom of God here and now. And here's what he says in verse number five. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. Make every effort to add to your faith. Peter says, we have a responsibility in what we do with our faith. And remember, this language that Peter uses here is coming from the idea of a Greek dance. It means to lead up hand in hand. So picture joining hands and dancing, okay? We're getting off the wall. No wall huggers. We're dancing with Jesus. We're following his lead. Now, some of you know that Carrie and I used to lead worship together. In fact, that's how we met and fell in love. In fact, this past Friday, we celebrated 16 years of marriage. Well, I confessed to you a few weeks ago that, 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 though, that I have no rhythm, okay? It doesn't come naturally for me. So you may be wondering, well, how did you play the guitar and lead worship? I learned the guitar a little bit, not so much out of any musical giftedness or ability or rhythm that I had, but just more out of discipline, okay? So in terms of leading worship, Carrie is incredibly gifted as a musician. Vocally, she's so gifted and as a worship leader. So what I did is I mostly stayed out out of her way and I followed her lead while I was leading worship. And I can still remember the telling the congregation during a song, all right, let's put our hands together, right? And, and, and we're clapping and it, and it never even had to be spoken between us. Carrie knew when I said that, that meant for her to start clapping because if I led the clapping, like we would be all over the place. Like I didn't, I, I didn't have it. So I followed her lead, okay? Jesus says, trust me, follow my lead. I have what you don't have. And I can lead you through the things that you feel like you can't get through. So he says, make every effort to add to your faith, okay? Where is he going to lead us? He says, I'm gonna lead you into goodness, all right? Jesus wants to lead us into goodness. What is goodness? A quick review. It's excellence in thoughts, feelings, and actions. Excellence in thoughts, feelings, and actions. He wants to change our thoughts. And with those thoughts, the feelings that come, and when our thinking changes, guess what happens? We start to experience change in our body language, in our attitudes, in our words. They all start to change. We start to speak words of life rather than words that bring death, all right? This is where Jesus wants to lead us, all right? And, and then he goes on to say in verse number five, and to goodness, knowledge. He says, I'm gonna lead you into knowledge. What is knowledge? Quick review, it's the ability to discern and orient life around God's will. Now remember, knowledge was paramount in the Hellenistic world. So what Peter's going to do is he's going into culture and he's gonna reclaim this word for the kingdom of God. And he's going to, to do the same thing with this very next virtue. Look with me at verse number six. And to knowledge, we're going to follow the lead of Jesus into what? Into self-control, right? Self-control, what is it? 
Quick review, a grip on desires and passions, okay? You have them, they don't have you, all right? Big difference between the two. Now, this is important. Our tendency is to wanna control circumstances. We wanna control people. We wanna control outcomes. But very few people think about the only control that the Bible actually says we are to have. What is it? Self-control, the fruit of the spirit, right? Now back to verse number six, all right? We're gonna, we're gonna keep following the lead of Jesus into self-control, where are we now going to be led? Peter says, into perseverance. What is this? Perseverance is the ability to remain steadfast in the faith during trials, okay? the ability to remain steadfast in the faith during trials. Now, regarding this, I love what the great Charles Spurgeon once said. He said, by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. (laughs) Think about that one for a minute. So with that visual in mind, let let me just give you a more technical understanding of this, this idea of perseverance. Perseverance is the Greek word hippomone, okay? Hippomone. Hippo means under, and then mone, it it means uh, to remain, okay? So we get the idea of endurance, steadfastness, or, uh uh-oh, patience, okay? The one thing that we've all learned not to pray for, right? You probably remember from your earlier days of following Jesus, how maybe you prayed for patience, you didn't realize what you were praying for. And at the time, you never made the connection but you prayed for it and all of a sudden your kids started acting up, throwing tantrums, right? Your teenager, like what's going on? Like, or maybe somebody became difficult at work, okay? What were you, what was happening? You prayed for patience, all right? In fact, on on Monday morning, I started my week off reflecting on the word that God gave me last Sunday to share on on self-control, right? And understand, you need to understand that everything I preach, I have to live as well, all right? You get that, right? So I was reflecting on the message from last Sunday and I was praying over my week and all that I had to have accomplished. And I wrote these words in my journal. I wrote this prayer in my journal. May self-control and discipline be a byproduct of your spirit working within me. May it be the fruit of my life. A beautiful prayer, right? God, self-control, give me self-control. Well, I kid you not, (laughs) within a matter of minutes of praying that in my journal, guess what I got tested in? Guess what Jesus led me into? Yep. Self-control. I was met with something that was very frustrating to me. And when we're met with frustration, it's one thing to have frustration, but it's another thing to cross the line and for frustration to have me. Will I allow frustration to have its way or will I allow the Holy Spirit to work his control over my soul, my heart, my mind, my body? Okay, patience is the same way, right? But understand what God wants to work in us, where he leads us is always good, all right? And in fact, the patience in the early church, it was actually considered the queen of all virtues. It's, it's not a passive acceptance of what comes our way. It means to remain in one spot, to, to hold your position, all right? When it came to patience and the early church, this is so cool. They knew it wasn't a matter of if they would win their battles, but when they would win their battles. Okay. And what that tells us is that nothing in our lives gets wasted. While God may not be the cause of what you're facing, patience means that no difficulty, no hardship, no trial, no temptation, nothing in our lives gets wasted wasted, all right? I wanna turn your attention to a parallel passage, all right? We've looked at this some, but in Romans chapter five, verse number one, Paul writes this, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, you should underline those words, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, justified is a legal term. It means to be declared righteous. So if you've placed your faith in Jesus, you are declared right with God. Therefore, as a result of that, we have peace with God. That's our reality. Now, we don't always live in light of that reality, but in Jesus, that is our reality, all right? Verse number two, through whom we have gained access. How? By faith into 
what? This grace in which we now stand, okay? And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Now, this is important, all right? The context for what Paul has written is what? It's, it's faith, all right? Remember what Peter said in 2 Peter 1, we are making every effort to add to our faith. So the context of this discussion is faith. What is that? It's all in on Jesus and his ways, resting in Jesus, trusting in Jesus, listening to Jesus, doing what Jesus says, all right? So why so much emphasis on faith? Here's why, because there are things that Jesus tells us to do that at times will feel or seem impossible. And left to yourself, they are impossible. Think about when Peter stepped out, out of the boat and began to walk on water. He was stepping out in response to Jesus saying, come on, okay? His basis was the word of God, faith in the word of God. And that's where faith comes in, all right? Faith that has no desire to see the impossible occur is a faith that's dead, all right? So let's look at the first part of Romans 5, 3. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Re rejoice in hard seasons? Like that seems impossible, right? Now understand, Paul is laying out a process of spiritual formation of growth, okay? Spiritual growth. And growth means change. Growth means a new normal. Out with the familiar, with the old, and in with the new. And, it, and that can be painful, right? Change is uncomfortable, and it can feel impossible. And I'm sure you have found yourself at some point or maybe many points over the past several months, whether it's been around COVID-19, the unknown in our future, I mean, it's still ahead that we still don't know. Maybe it's around the racial injustice in our country. You have probably asked or wondered at some point, how am I going to get through this? It's not that you don't want to, it's just hard. It's uncomfortable and it can feel exhausting, can it? Like D Dallas Willard, one of my favorite authors, speaks of the process of spiritual formation. And, and he writes about a mistake that is commonly made or a wrong thinking that sometimes we adopt and why we can get so discouraged and so frustrated when it comes to what God is leading us into, when we're challenged to grow. Listen to, to what he writes. They do not understand, or we don't understand the presupposition of the inner transformation into Christ likeness, okay? So this is the given, that this is what God is, is leading us into, okay? The presupposition of the inner transformation into Christ likeness that accompanies all the passages, okay? Even the hard things that God wants to lead us through. They assume, or we could say we assume that we are supposed to do all those glowing things, those hard things mentioned in such passages without loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. In fact, they think we must do them while our heart, mind, soul, and strength are still inclined in the, in the opposite direction against God. And of course, the despair is totally justified. Like what they are thinking would be completely impossible. Like you, you can't do the hard things God has called us to do unless we're moving with where God is moving, unless we're all in and following Jesus's lead, okay? These things are not just gonna happen with one foot in and one foot out. I must make every effort to add to my faith, to go all in, heart, mind, soul, strength, and the direction of, of the things of God, okay? So back to, to Romans 5, 3. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering does what? Produces, here's our word, perseverance. If my sufferings do not have the context of faith, all in on Jesus, then sufferings are gonna produce bitterness, not patience. Sufferings will produce resentment, not patience. And what Carrie Fisher, uh, maybe better known as Princess Leia, <laughs> once said, and it's so true, resentment is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. That's what a lot of us are doing right now. But that's not us. 
And that's not what's happening in us because the context of my life is the kingdom of God. It's faith. I'm all in on you, Jesus, trusting you with people, outcomes, circumstances. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my part and I know that you're gonna do yours. Therefore, the difficult times are building in me this virtue of patience, the queen virtue. And again, that's not a passive acceptance of what comes my way. Don't misunderstand that, but it's a resolve that I'm gonna hold my ground. I'm gonna stand my ground in Jesus' name, okay? Now, verse number four, perseverance does what? Leads to character and character hope, okay? Now, whose character? The character of Jesus. Peter uses the word godliness in his list in 2 Peter 1. This, this character builds hope. And hope for us is not wishful thinking, but it's a new quality of life that's built upon the promises of God. Think back to the passage we have been studying in 2 Peter chapter 1. Look back at verse number four for a moment. He has given us his very great and precious, what? Say it out loud, promises. So that through them, look at this, so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Now, very quickly, another parallel passage. Listen to how James says it in his writing. James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. How is that even possible, right? That's one of those passages. Because you know that the testing of your what? Say it, your faith, right? It produces perseverance. Patience, again, faith is the context. Both feet in, all in on the kingdom of God. Heart, mind, and body. My whole soul, my whole being aligned with Jesus, okay? And then we get to verse number four. Let perseverance or patience finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's your new normal. So let me show you a connection that Jesus makes for us regarding how do we stand our ground? How do we hold our ground? Luke chapter 18 in verse number one. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Now, what is a parable? Parables were stories that Jesus told to reveal the mystery of the kingdom of God to reveal the reality of his kingdom. So Jesus says, we are to pray and not give up, not lose heart. Prayer is not the only thing we do, but it better be the first thing we do. We do what? We pray first. Listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew 26, 41. Watch and what? Say it, pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit or the heart, remember that from last week? The spirit, the heart is what? Willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer is not an aspect of my relationship with God. Prayer is my relationship with God. What, what do we mean when we say that? Like, how do you always pray and never give up? How do you uh, pray always? There's another one that feels impossible. How do you pray without ceasing? It feels impossible, right? All of those passages, they seem so impossible to us. Here's what it comes down to. We're simply responding to his presence because his presence is always and his presence is without ceasing. And, and it's simply realizing that the greatest prize of this moment in front of me is the presence of God. And I'm just gonna respond to his presence in gratitude and in conversation. Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's talking to God out loud or within my thoughts. Like someone once said it this way, that every prayer can basically come down to either help or thank you. Help or thank you. Like that's what prayer is, is living. It's living within a constant awareness that I need the presence of God more than I need anything in life, more than I need frustration. I need the presence of God more than I need um, everything to go my way. I need the presence of God more than I need my worry. I need the presence of God more than I need attention on social media. I need the presence of God more than I need the relationship with that cute guy or that 
cute girl. I need the presence of God more than I need the news. I need the presence of God more than I need the approval of people. My greatest need and the greatest prize of life is the presence of Jesus, okay? Which is what Jesus said is here and now for us. Like, think about this. Think about Mark chapter one and verse number 15. Jesus announced when he started his ministry, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. Repent and believe the good news. Like when Jesus said it's here, like, do we think Jesus was kidding? <laughs> like, Jesus, were you, were you serious when you said that? No, we're talking about the reality of the kingdom of God. And prayer is living in constant awareness of and response to the reality of our king and his kingdom and him building his kingdom in our hearts. Like when he taught us to pray, what did he say? Pray this way. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus said his kingdom is a kingdom that is within I love, I love the words of of the great Oswald Chambers when he said this, prayer does not equip us for greater works. Prayer is the greater work. Yet we think of prayer is some common sense exercise of higher powers that simply prepares us for God's work. And in the teachings of Jesus Christ, prayer is the working of the miracle of redemption in me. The impossible, which does what? Produces the miracle of redemption in others. The impossible through the power of God. And naturally, as I'm living in response to the presence of God, participating in his divine power, I'm I'm gonna grow and I'm gonna follow the lead of Jesus into this next virtue in Peter's list. Verse number six, 2 Peter 1. To self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, what? Godliness. What is godliness? It is a God-given ability and responsibility to become more like Jesus. Let me say it again. It's a God-given ability and responsibility to become more like Jesus. It only makes sense that the more I'm living in awareness of the presence of Jesus, the more I'm listening to him, the more I'm talking with him, the more I become like him. And it doesn't mean that I'm gonna get it right every time. It doesn't mean I'm gonna be perfect. But when I fail, when I sin, when I mess up, when I fall short, when I miss the mark, in humility, I return to the cross and I behold his glory. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter three. But mark this, pay attention, mark my words, there will be terrible times in the last days. You know, a lot of people have asked, are we in the last days? I heard Bishop T.D. Jakes say this several weeks ago. He said, read your Bible, people. Like, I can't say it as well as he said it, but read your Bible. Everything that you're seeing is in your Bible. You know, Paul thought that he may see the return of Christ in his lifetime. And here we are almost 2000 years later and Jesus hasn't come yet. One thing we do know, every day that goes by, we are a day closer to his return. So here's what Paul says. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Verse three, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse five, having a form of, say it with me, godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with such people. A form of godliness, but with no power. This is nothing but self-righteousness, going through the motions of religion with no power. I, I think of what I heard Pastor Robert Madu say this past week. He said, we know the word, but do we know the author? This is what it comes down to. 
God calls us to holiness. And what he calls us to, he empowers us to, okay? And what we're talking about here, it's not your righteousness. It's about the Holy Spirit working the righteousness of Jesus in you. The Holy Spirit convicting you, the Holy Spirit touching the deep places of the heart and then out of our redeemed hearts, making a conscious decision to repent of anything that's not Christ-like and to turn to Jesus and to turn to his kingdom in faith, trust, and belief. Jesus is leading us into godliness, into holiness, and it's gonna require change, a new normal. In 2 Peter chapter three, Paul says this in verse number 17. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is, say this out loud with me, freedom. Say it again, freedom. And verse 18, we all who with, with unveiled faces, we contemplate the Lord's glory, his, his appearance and are being transformed into his likeness. That's, 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 that's godliness growing in holiness. How? With ever increasing glory. Some versions say from glory to glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit, okay? We're talking about growing in his glory, his freedom and his power. We're talking about partaking in his divine nature and power and becoming more and more like him. And if we follow the lead of Jesus, this is where he's going to lead us. And again, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's gonna be comfortable. In fact, it will probably be very difficult and it will be hard. But I just wanna encourage this this morning, that wherever Jesus leads us is always good, always good. And even better is always for his glory, his glory. It's always for his redemptive story and purposes that are unfolding in this life. And it's in his glory and it's in his redemptive story in the kingdom of God that is both a now kingdom and even a not yet kingdom. Because what God wants to do and what God is going to do, let me tell you, we haven't seen anything yet. (laughs) We haven't seen anything yet because what God has in store for us, remember what the word says, no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor mind conceived the things that God has prepared for us. Look, in this life, God wants his kingdom to come and he's going to lead us into that reality. But we've got to follow his lead. We've got to follow his lead. And so this morning, we've talked about patience. We've talked about godliness. Are we willing to follow wherever he leads? Even if it means uncomfortable, unfamiliar, even if it means change, are we willing to surrender and follow his lead? I'm gonna lead us this morning in a time of prayer as we get ready to close out our service today. And as we do, I'm gonna lead us in a guided time of prayer, a time of reflection. And then at the end of this time of prayer, I wanna give anyone an opportunity who has never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to make that decision for the very first time, to invite Jesus into your heart and surrender to him for the forgiveness of your sin for the very first time. But right now, I wanna encourage you, please don't rush off if you're watching online. But right now, let's just bow our hearts and our minds together in prayer before the Lord. As we start this day one of 21 days of prayer, We're gonna start with a prayer that we do very, very often. And we're gonna begin with this statement. Lord, you are. Lord, you are. And what I want us to do right now is to fill in the blank. Maybe you're watching online, just type it out. If you're on Facebook or in a place where you can type it out. Um, If you're at our Louisa campus, just say it out loud. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable initially, but just Lord, you are, fill in the blank. Lord, you are awesome. Just say it out loud. Lord, what are you? Lord, you are amazing. You are incredible, mighty, powerful. Come on, just say it out loud right where you are. Lord, you are, fill that blank in. The great I am, Prince of Peace, Healer, Almighty God. Come on, say it out, type it out. Lord, you are, fill in that blank. 
You are our all in all, Lord. Lord, you are. Lord, we could do this all day. We could, we, could, we could speak of how great you are, Lord, all day, and we still wouldn't have enough time. Lord, we are so grateful for your goodness. We are so grateful for your glory, for how powerful you are. And Lord, now we just want to, to shift our hearts into a, a posture of thanksgiving. Right now, where you are, Lord, I thank you for. Just say it out loud. You can whisper it. If you're, if you're, if you're online, maybe you wanna type it out. Lord, I am thankful for, fill in that blank right now. God, I'm thankful for such an amazing, amazing church family. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord, how you're moving throughout our region. Thank you for the opportunity to, to have a front row seat to how you're moving. Come on, Lord, I thank you for, what are you thankful for? Lord, on Father's Day, I thank you for my father. I thank you for the great and the, just the godly example that he has set before us. I thank you, Lord, for how he has, has, has loved my mom all of these years, how he has loved us all of these years, loved his grandchildren all of these years. I thank you for how he has walked with such integrity. Lord, I thank you for, fill in that blank. Lord, I thank you for, And Lord, we wanna pray right now. We wanna pray over our nation. As we begin this 21 days of prayer, we wanna pray for healing in our nation. Lord, I think of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Lord, we take you at your word today. We are all in on your word, Lord. Lord, we as your people called by your name, today we come before you, we humble ourselves before you. God, the things you call us to, we can't do them in and of ourselves. Lord, we have no answer for our sin in and of ourselves. So God, we declare our need for you today, Jesus. We declare our need and our dependence for you, Jesus. We humble ourselves, Lord. If, if your people are called by your name, we'll humble themselves and we pray, we pray, Lord. We seek your face, Lord, your glory, your power, Lord, your holiness, God. Pour it out, Father, on us. Pour it out on our land. God, and we turn, we repent. God, we repent of anything that you're exposing in us right now anything, God, that's not of you, God, anything that's hindering what it is you wanna do in and through our lives. Lord, any attitudes, Lord, any prejudices, any biases, Lord, any racism, Lord, in our hearts, God, we wanna repent, Lord. We wanna repent, Lord, as your people. We wanna take your word seriously. God, anything that we've been maybe stiff arming, any area of our lives that we've said to you is off limits, any relationship, God, we just wanna repent, Lord, of anything is holding us back, Lord. We wanna repent of any unforgiveness. We wanna repent of any bitterness. We wanna repent of any resentment that we've been harboring in our hearts, Lord. We wanna repent, Lord. We wanna turn from, from any of that, Lord, that's hindering, that's blocking the blessing, Lord, of what you wanna do, Lord, in and through your church, in and through your people. Lord, and we just take you at your word that then, then you will hear from heaven and you will forgive our sin and you will heal our land. And God, we need healing. God, our land needs healing. Our nation needs healing. And God, we ask you to bring it in Jesus' name. Bring healing, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father God, as we close this morning, God, we wanna pray as you taught us to pray. When you said, let's say it out loud together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
Deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Lord, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name. As we just stay in a spirit of prayer right now, please don't rush off. If you've never surrendered to Jesus, you've never said yes to Jesus and surrendered to him for the first time, I wanna give you the opportunity right now to surrender to him, to experience the forgiveness of all of your sins, to experience his mercy, a brand new start in life. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And I'm gonna ask you pray this prayer out loud with me, wherever you are. And I'm gonna ask that everyone watching at our Louisa campus, everyone, would pray this out loud together to support those who are making this decision for the first time today. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending him to die on the cross for my sin. Come into my heart, cleanse me of my sin and give me the courage to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said a big amen.